the nation has ignored us when i say ignored us they have ignored our rights our dignity our i mean existence they have ignored us all the three uh, constituencies of the valley gave their mandate and vote in favor of i mean uh, of the cause that is return of 370 uh, we do not enjoy militancy going up because we pay, pay with we pay the price with our lives and we understand the value of every human life hello everybody thank you for joining me all eyes were on the union budget this week but finance minister nirmala sitaraman also presented a budget for jammu and kashmir now this has been the practice since 2019 when the state was made into a union territory now this general election we saw a high voter turnout in jammu and kashmir the highest in three decades and the bjp as well as the central government believe that this is a result of all its new policies and its vision for naya kashmir my guest today believes exactly the opposite he believes the high voter turnout is a rejection of everything that's gone down since 2019 to find out what's going on in the minds and hearts of people from the kashmir valley i am going to be talking today to the member of parliament from srinagar he is aga sayed ruhula mehdi he is fast emerging as an eloquent and inclusive voice from kashmir rahula thank you so much for joining me i know you've had a very very busy day like all members of parliament in budget session thank you so much uh, for having me it's my job uh, my day lasts as much as you people wanted to last so i'm doing my service uh, let's hope it's some uh, positive here it will be positive because you're going to tell us about your impressions of parliament you've been a state legislator so you're well versed in the in the way an assembly or a parliament would function but to be in the parliament of india to be in the lok sabha representing srinagar you want to tell us your first impressions before we get to the you know actually budget. actually that's 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 a great uh, uh, way to start and a good question uh, i wanted to talk about it having uh, the experience of both the legislatures that is assembly state assembly and the parliament uh, i found somehow that the state legislature that we had assembly of jammu and kashmir i don't know about the uh, other state assemblies uh, i think i don't know i maybe uh, maybe it may be too early to comment but uh, this is how i felt uh, state legislature was more democratic and that was more disciplined uh, i mean here the numbers matter uh, in 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 parliament yes in the state legis- legislature also the um, numbers did matter but that only mattered uh, when it came to the passing of bills the government business formation of the government but the routine functioning of the state assembly was beyond numbers for example if you had uh, a debate for, for example on budget as yeah. we are uh, having at, at the moment in the parliament the speaker would i mean give chance to every bigger and a smaller political party in a sequence he would start from a bigger political party then then in sequence go to the smallest party and the independent men- uh, members and then circle it around again so everyone would get the opportunity every every political shade and form and individual and party would get the uh opportunity opportunity as well as the respect here in parliament what i felt and what i experienced for for these two motions that is the president's address and the budget discussion on these two it is brutally uh, biased on uh, on numbers i mean they get to favor start of the treasury benches not only in fra- favor of the treasury benches for example after the treasury benches uh, it's the congress which is the largest uh, yeah. party so the the speaker starts with the after the treasury benches starts with the congress then goes with for example samajwadi party then goes with tmc and dmk and then starts again the circle revolves around them the little small political parties and the individuals that are independently elected are given the left over time when it's at the fag end of the debate for example if the uh, debate continues for 
good three days at the fake end when there is no one ready to listen when there is no time when you want to rush it clear it i mean you want to clear the dirt it feels like that then you give the time to those uh, small little political parties and those individuals that's not how democracy democracy should would, should work and this institution which is the highest institution of, of of the country in terms of democracy it shouldn't work that way so that's the that's the difference that i felt in the functioning of the legislature i felt my my erstwhile uh, assembly uh, had more dignity than in in the functioning at least had more dignity than what i experienced here Uh, and it's interesting to me rahula that this is a this is in a lok sabha the 18th lok sabha has greater you know greater diversity at least in terms of opposition numbers right, right. so for you to say this and to explain how the pecking order functions and uh, that you know smaller parties don't get a say right. uh, is is you know is is disheartening because you would imagine that you represent the people of shrinagar right that constituency right. and every mp represents every last indian citizen absolutely uh, and you don't feel like you're being able to represent your constituency one more example is that the budget is tabled alongside the budget for union territory as they call it union territory i do yes. not ex- uh, accept the term union territory as they would want to call it yeah. the budget for jammu and kashmir was tabled alongside the union budget and what should have been the natural course the members from jammu and kashmir should have been given an ample time yeah. to either defend or to explain or to express uh, what they wanted to express about uh, the budget because it was about the state but yeah. you are told among all this your budget and your time has only i mean your worth is 2 minutes because Two minutes per member. Your worth is only four minutes, or we may be gracious to allow you six minutes. So to decide the fate in terms of budget, to decide the fate of a state, you allow uh, the members only four minutes or two minutes per member, and then ex- expect them to represent. How would they represent? How would I re- represent the aspirations, uh, the ideas? I mean, of my people in two minutes. I mean, your worth is as, as an individual. you are counted as 2 minutes and the the substance of mm. of the issue substance of the subject is not counted i mean the the mathematical approach and that to this brutal i mean this this uh, defeats the idea of democracy and the idea of representation i heard your maiden speech right in the thanks to the president's address and you had about 3 minutes and you used that 3 minutes really very effectively because you began by congratulating the speaker who had just been appointed to the post then you pointed out his failings and you made two very important points i want to pick those two points and get you to elaborate on them the first one is that you told the speaker that on his watch in the previous lok sabha a muslim mp danish ali from uttar pradesh was called a terrorist and you said that if on the floor of this house a muslim mp can be called a terrorist then what will happen on the streets the same thing will happen on the streets do you see yourself in that statement if i were to interpret it do you see yourself as representing all muslims in this country i don't want to be seen as representing muslims i don't want to i mean confine myself to a particular denomination what i would want to serve as i don't know what i would be i mean looked upon as or seen as that's a different thing but what i would want to serve as uh i would want to serve the voice of the oppressed in this country they may be hindus they may be muslims they may be sikhs they may be jains they may be christians whosoever is oppressed whosoever is marginalized whosoever is, whosoever is Uh, intimidated persecuted i would want to represent them and speak for them it's not about muslims at the at the moment unfortunately muslim community is a muslim uh, is a is a community which is at the receiving end so naturally i would want to speak about their fate at at many uh, places we have dalits we have social i mean sections of the society uh, which are uh, persecuted those who are oppressed i would equally want to speak about them what i have learned from my living experience in jammu and kashmir that uh, being ignored is a great pain and being ignored is a is a bad space if i feel i 
am ignored my pain and my aspirations is ignored by the nation collectively there may be sections th- those who would try to do their services and i give my gratitude express my gratitude and respect to those their services but i'm talking in general the nation has ignored us when i say ignored us they have ignored our rights our dignity our i mean existence they have ignored us i know the space i know how it feels while being ignored and cornered and pushed to a wall with that experience and that learning i i would not want to grow as a person who would i mean in revenge uh, i mean ignore others you are saying as a as a kashmiri as a kashmiri muslim man in india today you feel empathy for everybody who's oppressed no matter Every- what their religion no matter what no. what their other identity absolutely absolutely that's what i mean okay. i f- i feel the pain i have the empathy so and we need to collectively stand up we we as a nation uh, we are a great nation we are a beautiful nation and i believe in that is just that we are segregated we are divided we are intimidated for different purposes we are not together the other point that you made in that maiden speech was a, a reference a direct reference to article 370 and how it was removed you said that there was hardly a half hour debate in the lok sabha the point you were trying to make is the ease that was done swiftly and easily yes yeah, that's it was just you know yeah something and he didn't he didn't allow me to complete my sentence because my was turned off i i wanted yeah. to say and what i said i told them metaphorically that you you brought that bill in a half an hour and i mean concluded that business in 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 swift manner i mean and while uh, while the government was doing that one of your mps that is farooq abdullah sir Mm. he was in jail he was put in jail mm. and you as a speaker could not ask for the presence of your mp and that's where your bias could be seen you didn't do your job while the bill was brought about the jammu uh, the state of jammu and kashmir and its fate and its future uh, to come the history will know the fact that there was no one to defend and that that absence of of uh, the member of parliament from srinagar was facilitated by the speaker and he, it was not questioned by the speaker therefore he didn't do that his job at, uh, at that moment as well so my question on article 370 now is that 5 years have passed um the supreme court in december last year gave its verdict saying validating the government's decision um the parties whether it's the opposition parties at the national level or even parties in um, in kashmir you know you all had the uh, gupkar alliance. alliance which has fallen through and the alliance was to protest you know the abrogation of 370 the lack of special status that's gone so my question to you raula is where what is the relevance of this is this is article 370 is special status uh, is the uh, you know the to get back statehood are these um, are these are these issues even uh, that 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 are politically relevant they they may be emotional issues for sure they are emotional issues they, they matter are issues. they politically relevant given the context that i have just laid out these issues are politically relevant and very important for the people of jammu and kashmir is vindicated with the fact that i came elected from kashmir uh, on a political campaigning electoral campaigning that i will stand and speak for the return of 370 so the primary purpose of my election primary mandate for my election from the people of kashmir was that we will speak against the abrogation of 370 and for the return of 370 so my entire political cam- uh, election campaigning was i mean revolved around this a uh, basic fact and uh, as you said that supreme court i mean gave its judgment ag- against uh, in favor of the abrogation of 370 that doesn't end the road for us because the same supreme court had uh, i mean given three judgments before this last judgment has, has given three judgments in favor of 370 and at that time if the supreme court's judgment was not the last word for this political organization or party that is bjp how do they expect us to take this word this judgment as a last word it's a political fight 
it is a fight that we need to fight alongside uh, in the judiciary alongside that we need to fight it politically the way bjp fought for it three times the judiciary gave its verdict uh, in favor of 370 but the bjp didn't give up and it, they didn't give up uh, give up their i mean uh, demand and their, their political ideology for good 70 years so it doesn't it shouldn't mean for us that the end uh, uh, this is the end of the road it's a political uh, fight and we need to keep our cause alive i mean the basic and fundamental reason for uh, jammu and kashmir to exceed with the union of india was the autonomy of the state that we will decide for ourselves uh, we will uh, will be the masters of our own de- uh, destiny there will be certain subjects uh, that the union will decide but most of the sub- subjects will be decided by the state itself and it was a sovereign guarantee sovereign promise and the constitutional that uh, a provision that was pro- provided to us article 370 that we have the right to i mean decide for ourselves and have that autonomy and saying you should take a leaf out of the bjp's book and continue to 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 commit to do this commitment and to fight this battle politically i find that really interesting but my question to you is when something like the gupkar alliance falls apart when there you know where parties came together for mm-hmm. this why do you feel what makes you confident that a political fight is possible to to get back all of these things that you have lost uh despite the fact that uh, gupkar alliance couldn't hold pagd couldn't hold uh, itself the mandate of this last uh, parliament uh, parliamentary elections speaks for itself for all the three uh, constituencies of the valley gave their mandate and vote in favor of i mean uh, of the cause that is return of 370 so more than gupkar alliance or the organizations what matters is the opinion of the people in general and the opinion of the people from north to south in kashmir and i believe that people in jammu as well believe that uh, 370 should be returned and they they can politically continue with their fight and go to any extent in in terms of uh, democracy uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean in terms of working out uh, uh, democratically mm. they 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 have not given up they want uh, uh, the return of 370 and they want to speak and express that the abrogation was unconstitutional undemocratic and we have not subscribed to it we have not i mean we did not approve that that happened against our wishes that happened ag- against our will so uh, organizations are not important what is important is the opinion of the people of jammu and kashmir are political parties up to this uh, up to this challenge those who matter i mean the primary political party that is national conference it is up to this challenge your party and uh, yes that's my party it's up to this challenge i mean uh, my campaigning my narrative mm. and then my i mean nomination as a ca- uh, candidate for 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 lok sabha speaks for itself that uh, my political party is up uh, up for it and a political party which can be counted i mean a bit mm, closer or if not closer a bit relevant after national conference that is jk pdp which i believe that uh, their narrative is also the same as i as i speak uh speaking about those political parties uh, which were not up for it and who didn't want to fight politically for the return of 370 uh were shown their places by the people of jammu and kashmir most of those political parties lost their i mean uh, deposit uh, in the elections and that's the answer from the people of jammu and kashmir and you have talked over your campaign uh, across your campaign and at several points about the uh, political prisoners uh in in jammu and kashmir and you know there have been human rights activists um there have been journalists and several you know social activists people who have been incarcerated uh, pending trial uh and uh, under very stringent laws uh you had said you would bring this up in uh, parliament you would this is one of the causes that you would pursue um at the national stage can you tell us what you're planning on this and is, have, is there any development on this that you can tell us i have given a question uh, submitted a question in the parliament and i hope that will be listed for the business very soon mm-hmm. i'm asking uh, the government the home ministry about uh, 
their status uh, about their cases the state of uh, status of their cases where about their whereabout and about the plans of their release and i'll be asking that question and i'll be debating that question i hope that question comes up that's enlisted very soon in the uh, in the parliament and i'm waiting for i'm waiting for the grants of the home ministry when, once those grants come and i'll uh, uh, take part in that debate and speak about these issues definitely in the parliament because i saw you tweet saying that you were planning to introduce a private members bill asking for prohibition in jammu and kashmir why is that i mean where is that coming from i think uh, we had an understanding uh, in jammu and kashmir the society in general had an understanding that this is something we do not subscribe to we do not i mean we do not use alcohol but that's our own choice for, for whatever reason we do not but there are tourists there are some people who would want to uh, consume al uh, alcohol and that understanding was there and respect for that understanding and respect for that space was there therefore you couldn't see you wouldn't see the open consumption of alcohol and then the results of that the misbehavior and whatever uh, the results uh, that it brings with it when it's overdone Uh, that respect was there it was never consumed either by tourists or anyone who wanted to consume it it was never consumed uh, openly and the bars or the uh, shops those who would sell uh, alcohol were very limited and one or two uh, shops were available in srinagar that would sell it but for the last 2 3 years what you could see in uh, srinagar is something that you feel is being pur purposely done what do you mean you can see people coming and consuming alcohol on most of the streets where the uh, tourists go around uh, very important streets around dal lake that's called uh, one very important road that's called boulevard yeah i mean it's openly uh, uh, consumed there it's used there and then used and consumed to the extent then when 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 the individual uh, loses loses his or her i mean control over uh, themselves and then it's used i i don't want to i mean uh, that will uh, i don't want to generalize but there are many incidences when this use is being abused mm. and now is the time when we feel that the society didn't want this to happen and if it is pushed to that limit uh, let's address it, let's address it and it's being purposely i think i mean number of shops number of bars is being increased Uh, mm. because we are not the decision makers we are not the ones who are at the helm of affairs yes. the people of jammu and kashmir are not taking these decisions these decisions are being taken from delhi from home ministry and you can certainly see these i mean we call it cultural invasion i wouldn't want to come and open a butcher shop in a place where it's not i mean uh, socially good to it's do it's vegetarian uh, community yes. uh, i wouldn't want to go there i would i would see it as a social invasion disrespect and i would equally appreciate the other side doing that in terms of alcohol but, but in legislatively in parliament why not via the lg and you know maybe after the elections when they are held because we know that the supreme court has asked for a by september 30th that elections should be conducted in jnk isn't it well for me lg's administration is an illegitimate uh, administration so you Under don't want to I don't want to give them the legitimacy to address uh, by addressing LG. Uh, I don't have anything about the individual. Individual uh, has all the respect what an, an individual can have. I'm talking about the institution. LG's institution in Jammu and Kashmir is an illegitimate, undemocratic, and forced upon us uh, institution. I do not want to legitimize that. Number one is that. Number two, even if someone from Jammu and Kashmir wanted to go and uh, flag this issue with them, they wouldn't. I mean, he to the uh, the sentiments and the uh, feeling and the demand of the people they would do uh, i mean they would do the other way around they would further want to i mean uh, do whatever they could they could do to hurt hurt the sentiments and uh, the demand of uh, people of jammu and kashmir i would uh, wait for the legislative assembly to uh, come and then legislate for it number one uh, i don't see that happening Uh, i'm not sure whether this uh, government will hold elections in in jammu and kashmir i'm not sure not i mean well, do you think that it, it will <laughs> respect this uh, directives and directions of supreme court i'm i'm skeptic about it it's not ready for because they've also they've also, they've also widened the powers of the lg so even that's that's, that's what i wanted to number 2 is even if the elections happen 
and the state legislative assembly legislates for this purpose the veto power is in hands of the lg he can put down the bill he can i, I mean uh, i mean shoot down the uh, will at his command the veto power is with lg the legislative assembly of jammu and kashmir is i mean i mean for name sake now the powers are shifted to lg the democratic uh, el- democratically elected government is toothless and powerless it cannot legislate it cannot plan uh, and, and, and it- yet and yet elections have to be held you do need those 90 members to be elected e- even I, though, even though you say that it will be a toothless body i my purpose is not to speak for demand for elections that is the lowest i could go but yes in the greater scheme of things this gap should not be there elections should happen this is one of the i mean basic things mm-hmm. i'm not here to speak i have not come here to i mean speak and represent the people of jammu and kashmir asking and begging for elections as a basic thing our cause is bigger our cause is the sanctity of the institution which we want to bring up through the election india calls itself a democracy and a great democracy mm-hmm. in a democracy you have a region which is which is not democratically governed which is de- governed by force and which is governed by dicta- dictators therefore elections should happen there will you paint a picture of the last 5 years you mentioned this alcohol consumption uh, you know a deliberate uh, you know partly uh, not partly it is for tourists it's for visitors and it's something that you're saying the local community is not comfortable with uh, you know when you're far away and you're listening you're you're hearing are shrinagar mein multiplex aa gaya hai um, there is an i am uh, i think in jammu um, the prime minister is doing yoga sessions there and putting um, you know shrinagar on the map you know about g20 meetings being held you're hearing a lot of development activity so from very far away these are some of the things we hear they are facts and of course the mainstream media then starts to build propaganda in favor of the central government around it i understand that but what will you be able to give me a paint a picture of life at the daily life level in the past since 2019 and at the morale level since 2019 for the average kashmiri number one that the people are scared of speaking whatever they want to speak mm. they are scared in all my conversation yes. they they would want to genuinely dissent but they are scared of that they wouldn't dissent mm. that uh, political imx or, or whatever names you have for those uh, those theaters i mean does not i mean fit in the scheme of things when you have uh, people who put a status of dissent on social media a simple status peaceful status of dissent on social media they are slapped with psas when you have hundreds of such families whose kids are uh, i mean Uh, put in jail and the whereabout is not known in which jail these these uh, movie theaters do not fit in the scheme of things for them when you have journalists whose ha- houses are raided because they printed or spoke about the facts uh, when their houses are raided when their uh, family is intimidated i mean that is the reality this this uh, uh, movie theaters and these uh, stunts do not uh fit in the scheme of things the society in general is intimidated and the society feels that suffocation it cannot speak for itself it cannot speak for its uh, political aspirations it cannot speak for its i mean uh, status that it has it cannot put a dissent journalists are either under uh, under arrest they are in jail or intimidated or uh, a uap has been uh, i mean slapped uh, they are booked under psa no media is functioning uh, independently every section of the society is under a permanent watch mm-hmm. and intimidation not only watch and intimidation and you do not have a functional democracy you have bureaucrats and police it's a it's a functional police state it's a it's a state that, that is run by bureaucrats who intimidate who are not accountable to the people of jammu and kashmir who run it by their wishes and whims 
your product is discouraged you apple came is is an example of last year trucks truck loads of apple came which came out of srinagar for 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 sales in in mandis in in uh, the other states of india they were stopped at uh, uh, banihal and stopped for 15 days so that the product, product from the outside so yes so you have i mean the road construction is an example this should represent the fact of jammu and kashmir many such examples there is a road that's been constructed either on highways or a, a ring road that's been constructed no local work, worker is allowed to work there no local local laborer is allowed to work there no local contractor is allowed to work there no supplies is being allowed to be supplied by uh, the citizens of jammu and kashmir uh same goes with many i mean i can go on and on with with uh, these ex- examples every day there's a question mark of uh, on on the land that the people of jammu and kashmir hold that the land they have held for centuries and out uh, and bureaucrat from outside comes and tells them that you will have to vacate this land and uh, an example of uh, uh, bulldozer being used uh can be seen uh, very recently that happened so from land to job to economy to business to expression to uh, political e- uh, empowerment to social i mean uh, empowerment jammu the people of jammu and kashmir are challenged at every level and every day and they give us an example of a movie theater and wine shops and say that everything is fine that's that's very unfortunate reality of jammu and kashmir is far beyond far beyond from these movie theaters and and movie theater was that movie theater asked was there ever a demand by the people of jammu and kashmir for a movie theater or if the demand of a, uh, of the people of jammu and kashmir are so important there are many more important demands than a movie theater which are not addressed so this is this is the reality of jammu and kashmir that we have so when you look at the budget uh you know uh, in the union budget there was a 42000 crore allocation for jnk you have the state budget where the government says there are all of these things that are being allocated where is all that going what is it creating who is it for because the pandits have not gone back you guys are not happy what who what is going on i mean what what give us give us an understanding of what is going on who is this is all taxpayers money that's being spent so who is it benefiting this is our question as well where is it going <laughs> we don't see anything i mean we don't see uh, infrastructure coming up we don't see any capital investment in in jammu and kashmir we don't see anything substantial ha- happening if anything things are get, going backwards in terms of infrastructure go to the village level go to the district level go to the panchayat level tehsil level nothing is happening i mean w- nothing in power sector no projects no new power project projects are coming up no new district wise uh, hostels are coming uh, coming up no new roads um, are coming up yes there are some cosmetic things that are happening cosmetic thing cosmetic development that's happening in the heart of srinagar that is gantagar that will be sold every indian would know what a gantagar is <laughs> but that that's not the the entire jammu and kashmir and jammu and kashmir is way beyond that the investment is happening on i mean they are, they are quoting some some roads which is otherwise also um, uh, a central subject highways are a central subject what for us they are showing their own investment which would otherwise also ha- i mean go on naturally a highway built from say, say delhi to maharashtra is a central subject it won't be shown in the budget of maharashtra but the irony is the investment done on the centrally sponsored schemes are shown in the budget of uh, the jammu and kashmir and then it's said that we we are doing and invest uh, investing this much the fact is beyond these high highways that that, that was those was started way be, uh, before uh, bjp came into power there are no new roads that are coming up there are no new hostels at the district level that are coming up there's no uh, college Uh, educational institution that is coming up there is nothing in power project that is happen- happening in jammu and kashmir there is no substantial thing happening the employ- unemployment is at the highest 
which was unheard of in Jammu and Kashmir. The un- unemployment is at the highest. And one one more thing, the cost of living, which was the lowest in Jammu and Kashmir, is at the highest. It's uh, to afford the survival of a common a a, a, a single day is be- uh, becoming very difficult for the citizens of Jammu and Kashmir. The prices of electricity and water is going up. I mean, uh, the taxes are being uh, slapped upon us. Even uh, it's it goes very common. Uh, people call it. I mean, very soon the oxygen will be taxed uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. Property is being taxed. Water is being taxed. Electricity is. The tariffs are going up. I mean, nothing is substan. Nothing substantially is ha- happening beyond that Gantagar and uh, um, uh, this Boulevard Road. Uh, I don't see anything happening. So therefore, it's also our question: What's happening? Where is this taxpayers' money going? And I can say a lot about it uh, to which pocket and whose pockets it's going. But let's keep that for another day. Okay, uh, let's keep that for another day uh, because you have another b- b- big problem that is, uh, you know, that's rearing its head. It has been a problem, uh, a chronic problem, and that is. Terror attacks in the last few months uh, have really shot up. I think this month alone, uh, uh, you know, more than 12 uh, armed forces uh, people have died. Um, how worried are you by what is happening? Because what 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 I have heard and seen and understood is that the Kashmiri becomes caught in the middle, isn't it? So you have the you have the terror attacks and the terrorists. Uh, and you have the armed forces uh, from the union government and in between uh, you're either the target or the the suspect from both sides right Uh, so give me a sense of what is the tangible fear and anxiety and concern you have given this surge because I'm not interested in this conversation about the security aspect a lot of better journalists and more you know experts have done these conversations Uh, let's talk about what it means to the common man, this surge in militancy. In this, the good thing that you uh, asked is that we are caught in the middle. And one such example is that uh, my father was assassinated. And f- therefore, for that side, he was a target. And for this side, uh, that is BJP's uh, idea of India, not the actual India, the BJP's idea of India. The same person whose family is, I mean, uh, affected by the min- militancy, who have sacrificed their life for the idea of democracy and the principles. For this side, I'm a terrorist. For what reason? Because I do not agree to the ideology of uh, BJP, the right wing India. Mm. So this is the irony. This is this is uh, how we live, and how we get caught caught in the middle. Uh, we do not enjoy militancy going up. Because we pay, pay with, we pay the price with our lives, and we understand the value of every human life, and we know well when the militancy goes up alongside the jawans, the people of Jammu and Kashmir will have, will have to pay their uh, lose their lives. So we do not enjoy militancy going up. We get worried, and it's a it's a situation which is worrisome. And this current. Um, this graph of militancy is unfortunately coming up in those areas where the militancy was uh, completely gone or washed off. And you can see the re- Jammu region being the new hotbed of militancy. That that speaks for itself how lenient or not lenient, how incompetent this government was and is in dealing with the situation. And the fact that makes it more dangerous is the lies of the BJP because they they lied about the cause of the militancy. They lied about the reason of the militancy. They, what they, is the reason? They said that 370 they said that 370 was the cause of the militancy and the reason of the militancy. And having it abrogated, uh, it's been now five years, more than five years, you you continue to see the militancy and you you now see militancy in those areas. Where it never happened. What, what do you attribute it to? Because you know there have been attacks in the past five years on migrant workers and you know th- on different sets of people, but they've been you know they've been sort of sporadic. But since early this year, it has been quite consistent, 
and there have been encounters with the armed forces. So what what is your understanding of what is going on? The forces that that fought this uh, this nation uh, with gun and violence would not give up. They would want to find find ways. Uh, I mean to continue their job with their job. They did, and they will always uh, try to do that. Our point has always been that we need to settle this political issue in a manner where the people of Jammu and Kashmir feel the sense of achievement. Unless they have the sense of achievement, unless you turn uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir in your side with uh, confidence and dignity, mm. this issue is unsettled, and any unsettled political issue can be exploited. And when I say exploit can be exploited, I do not endorse that ex exploitation. We are the victims of the, that exploitation. We say in pain that there's a gap which can be exploited. There's an issue which can be exploited and is being e exploited. Therefore, what you need especially to especially young people, right? Young people, you will be especially vulnerable to be exploited. Absolutely, absolutely. So therefore, you need to give this society a collective sense of achievement political empowerment where this society can turn around and handle that situation itself if you try to handle this situation with might i mean that's not going to happen this is always going to prop up come up in one way or the other you need to fi find ways and solutions where it's sustainable and that the only solution is that uh, you have to politically uh, empower and you have to give the sense of achievement to the uh, people of Jammu and Kashmir and settle this issue for once and all. Give those forces the empowerment, uh, the political empowerment, uh, empowerment where it can say that the idea that we stand for is is I, I mean is uncompromisable, and that society fights these ideas, those who who, who are violent, and we have been doing that. We fought for these uh, violent ideas. We fought militancy with our blood. Because we felt that the idea of India that we believed in was very strong and democratic, uh, uh, democratically high in principles. So you need to address this, this issue politically. You cannot have a clear-cut answer that this is the reason of the militancy and this, can, this is how you can uh, deal with it. This, there's no military method uh, to deal so, with, with the... So, uh, so when, when, when the DJP of the state makes statements like mainstream parties in Kashmir have, you know, they have uh, fomented this for elected electoral benefits. I saw you react to this comment of the DGP in your uh, tweet. Uh, why are those statements made? The irony is that the DGP is me making those statements. Therefore, you can understand the plight of Jammu and Kashmir at the moment and the, the situation that we have. The DGP is uh, uh, making political statements and discrediting the entire mainstream, which has given its blood for the union of India, for the idea of India, for the idea of democracy, it's only because of the blood of mainstream that the democracy was still standing till 2019. Now it's not. It, it was only because of the blood that the mainstream gave. Against all odds, this mainstream stood up with the flag of democracy and the union. And this, uh, this, DJP, uh, this DGP comes up with a political statement discrediting, uh, humiliating the entire uh, uh, the mainstream for what purpose i mean uh, to make his masters in delhi happy and to make his masters in in delhi happy he's sex sacrificing the entire force that fought against the militancy that fought against the extremism that fought against the, uh, uh, this uh, fundamentalism and what to what end what do you want to earn from this what what do you want to create in jammu and kashmir what forces do you want to create in jammu and kashmir if those forces, those who fought with their blood against the fundamentalism and stood for the idea, idea in the institutions of the uh, democracy, are not worth worth respect. This is for everybody to see. I get, I get. I mean, calls from from the youngsters. This is your plight. This is this is your rea reality in in the in the India that you speak about. This is how you are being seen in India that you speak about and stand for. So they, their, their ideology gets intimidated, uh, vindicated with this. They said that, see, this is where we said uh, this, this idea was never, never right. So this, 
a djp a dgp has done not only done a great disservice this is a behavior i don't know in which democracy is is tolerated uh, um, india would never if it was a fully functional democracy would never tolerate such a behavior from from a djp this is how they deal with the uh, political class political executive of the jammu and kashmir then then you can understand what must be the plight of the common kashmiris in jammu and kashmir what is it that gives you hope given that this is the picture that you are dealing with what you have painted is what you are dealing with and uh, you know nothing seems to have changed i mean K- kashmiri pandits were supposed to have been resettled that was one of the bjp's big promises but that doesn't seem to have materialized either i have heard you say on the campaign trail that you know even though you don't feel kashmiri muslims were responsible for what happened at an individual level that you do feel helpless and you apologize you understand the pain that the pandits have gone through but no settlement has happened for them you have painted such a bleak picture what is the hope then uh, where do you what is your source of hope my hope comes from the india where the majority is hindu community and it defeated bjp and narendra modi in 2024 for its fundamentalist and extremist ideas and politics it showed bjp and its right wing politics its place that the india in general does not subscribe to this extremist idea it believes in pluralism it believes in uh, the values of the constitution it ble- believes in the pr- principles of uh, india my hope comes from the fact that the majority of india though segregated though divided at the moment is not like what uh, rss and bjp is and this fact comes from uh, this this is vindicated from the fact that ayodhya was lost by bjp this comes from the fact that all those constituencies where uh, prime minister modi went and spoke ill about muslims bjp lost those those constituencies we have from south to west Beng- bengal to many areas of n- north many hindus those who are in majority or in majorities in their states still care for the collective being uh, and collective survival and collective existence uh, of all people of uh, of of india this this is this is my hope and i believe uh, this is an india which will not defeat me i believe this is an india which will not defeat the people of jammu and kashmir this madness will go this madness will be defeated as it is already defeated by the people of india in 2024 and india will reemerge the right thinking majority of india will take over and that india will come come back again where you and i are not valued as muslim and uh, hindu we are valued as common and equal human beings this is something that i have told in my private conversations and in my polit- uh, political campaigning this is something that we gave our blood for my father gave blood for and ble- i believe this will come back this this is the reality and if i am defeated god forbid if i am defeated that will be i mean i'll lose hope for uh, forever and that will be a last nail in the coffin that will be a great defeat that will not be a defeat for me as an individual that will be a great defeat for 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 the nation itself well i what can i say rahula i hope that you feel you feel valued and that the people you represent feel you know respected valued and like they belong uh, i thank you for making time we'll keep talking closer to the state elections i'm going to check in with you and figure out what's happening but okay. thank you so much for making time i wish you a lot of good luck Thank you so much thank you for having me wish you good luck to you thank you